Welcome back everyone, Jose21 Crisis here and today we have a new episode of the Mendoza career. Round 8 of the FIA Formula 1 World Championship takes us to Canada for the Canadian Grand Prix at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. In contrast to the super tight streets of the Monaco Street Circuit, the roads on Circuit Gilles Villeneuve are fairly small and they look even smaller thanks to the fact that the walls are very close to the track. It definitely feels like a street circuit, but it is very much a dedicated motorsports facility. At just 2.7 kilometers long, it is one of the shortest tracks in the F1 calendar. However, it also features some of the highest speeds you will see in F1 racing, less than tracks like Italy or Hockenheim, thanks to the fact it has some of the longest straights on the calendar. Despite the fairly imposing straights, you cannot dedicate so much downforce configuration to be able to be fast on them, as the track also features plenty corners in the middle sector. Teams will try to go for the lower end of their downforce configurations, to be specific their middle downforce configurations, to be as fast as possible but while being able to defend around the long straights. Fortunately for the F1 Circus, weather doesn't see like it will be a big factor in this Grand Prix, other than some rain before qualifying that should dry out by the start of the session, there will be no rain expected throughout the main sessions of the weekend. Tire wear is usually not a big concern around this track to the point that soft tire runners can do a one stop, although a two stop strategy is the faster strategy overall. One stop does give you better track position in a track where it's very difficult to overtake. Before we head into qualifying, there's two new pieces of information we can show you now. The first is a table that shows the estimated performance of each team. As you can see, we have every team and their performance value ordered from best to worst. This performance is cal calculated from the initial performance of the team as well as the upgrades they have brought along. As you can see, our experts consider that McLaren Mercedes are leading the way followed by Ferrari. Right behind them, although 8 points behind, it's Jaguar Cosworth followed by Benetton Jordan right behind Benetton and BAR tied with them. Williams is lagging behind with Arrows trying their best to get into that midfielder group. Sauber is trying to beat Arrows while Prost and Minardi are having their own fight amongst themselves. The second table we have is the driver value table. The driver value table rates the drivers based on the expected performance of each team. So you can see drivers like Michael Schumacher, Alex Mendoza, Ralph Schumacher, Jacques Villeneuve having excellent ratings and the reason for this is because they have met the qualifying and race objectives set up by their teams. On the other hand, you have drivers like Mika Hacking and David Coulthard, Heinz Harald Friends and Jarno Trulli, Eddie Irvine that haven't quite met the high objectives their teams have. In the case of the McLaren drivers, they haven't met their objectives in the form of taking the front row on every race as well as obtaining a 1-2 on every race. In the case of the Jordan drivers, they are supposed to be the third best team in Formula 1 and clearly they haven't done so, which is a disappointment considering the achieved objectives in the previous year. Anyway, that is enough talk for now, I'm hearing qualifying is about to begin, so let's get down there and see where everyone stacks up.
I'm pretty sure Ferrari is very happy with Michael Schumacher taking pole position for the 2000 Canadian Grand Prix followed by Rubens Barrichello for a Ferrari 1-2. David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen of McLaren are right behind them on the second row. They are followed by Giancarlo Fisichella and Jarno Trulli, 5th and 6th. Heinz Harald Frentzen on 7th with Alex Mendoza on 8th, Eddie Irvine on 9th. We have heard that Eddie Irvine is on hard tires, so this performance could have been much better. Jack Villeneuve puts it on 10th. Pedro de la Rosa, with a very good qualifying in his arrows, puts it on 11, while Jenson Button, a bit disappointing from the Williams team, puts it on 12. Alexander Wurz puts it on 13, with Ralph Schumacher 14. Pedro Diniz 15, with Josh Verstappen 16. Ricardo Sonta, very disappointing qualifying, he's down in 17. Marginet, with an excellent qualifying for the Minardi team, apparently their new... I say new... Their respec engines are working really well, they are 18. John Alesi is 19 with Casto Masakane 20. Mika Salo, very, very disappointing performance, he's down in 21st with Nick Heidfield putting in on 22nd. And if you need a reminder of what's at stake today, Michael Schumacher leads the championship with 46 points over Mika Hakkinen, who only has 39. David Coulthard is now third in the championship with 30 points, with Alex Mendoza down in fourth with 21. Rubens Barrichello is very close to passing him, he only has 20 points. Then you have a big gap to Jacques Villeneuve, who has 7, Eddie Irvine, who just got 5, Heinz Harald Frensen, 5 points, Jarno Trulli, 4 points, Giancarlo Fisichella and Ralph Schumacher both on 2 points, and Ricardo Santa with a single point. As for the constructor standings, McLaren lead the way on this one with 69 points over Ferrari with only 66 points. Jaguar is right behind 26 points with Jordan on 9 points, VAR Honda with 8 points, Benetton and Williams both tied with 2 points. Everyone else is unclassified. And now before we get into the race, comment, like, subscribe, the usual YouTuber stuff and support me on coffee if you really so desire. Also, shoutouts to Jorge Alonso for his excellent career spreadsheet, which is what's powering right now this career mode. And if you really want to play this game or discover some new interesting stuff about F1 Challenge, come join the F1 Challenge Discord server. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now let's get down there. It's Sunday 2pm and the race is about to begin, so let's get in there. It is a beautiful day here in Ile Notre Dame. Circuit Gilles Villeneuve is ready for the 2000 Canadian Grand Prix. The clutches are ready. And they're off. F1 is ready. Ferrari with an excellent start. Michael Schumacher first. Robert Barrichello second. They will stay that way into turn one. It looks like the McLarens had some issues though. Mika Hakkinen dropped down to fifth. With Giancarlo Fisichella jumping up a place. Great start by Fisichella. Right behind all of them is... Alex Mendoza, you see he's still in 6th, actually excellent start, he passed both Frensen and Trulli, if that's the case, good start there by the Venezuelan, in any case, Michael Schumacher leads, and I think I saw, yeah, Mendoza just overtook Mika Hakkinen, and what's, oh, what's happening with the Finn, he, he really needs to start fighting up here with Michael Schumacher and the rest, and not with the Jaguars and Benettons, that's not a great, not a great look, for the world champion anyway, Michael Schumacher leads from Rubens Barrichello and they are gonna stay this way. David Coulthard is trying to catch up to Rubens Barrichello, trying to pass him, but so far no dice. Right behind them, Giancarlo Fisichella from Benetton, then Alex Mendoza in fifth for Jaguar, then sixth you have Mika Hakkinen. Disappointing start from the Finn, disappointing for McLaren, they need to, they, they, they need to get up here, they need to start battling with the Ferraris, they cannot let them get away, remember Ferrari's lead is, well Michael Schumacher is leading the Drivers Championship and McLaren has a slim lead in the Constructors and they will lose that lead if things hold as is, Michael Schumacher still leads on lap 1, careful Michael, do not go off the line, you might crash if you do so. I'm told one of the arrows had issues, this is Pedro de la Rosa, let's see what kind of issue he had, looks like he took turn 1, no issue whatsoever, this is a replay of lap 1, we saw him dropping way down the field, but why did it, oh, 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 oh spun off in, in that chicane, that's, I, I, I always struggle to count the corner, that's turn 3, 3, 4, 
Little struggle there, I see why he fell down now. Mendoza out here looking with some strong pace, it should be noted that most teams of course ran with low downforce while the Jaguars are running with a higher downforce configuration because it seems that is making them faster around the track and where's where's Fisichella going? Whatever, the, whatever he was going, he clearly wasn't on the track and Mendoza takes advantage of that to take P4. I mean, he, he was potentially intimidated by Mendoza making a move there. Careful Mendoza, you're gonna give up the position. But I'm not sure the grass is an ideal braking area. And here we see Josh Verstappen. Clearly, arrows, uh, the, the arrows aren't quite working in this track. You will expect them. Ah, that's gonna make them even worse. Ooh, little hit them from I think that's Santa. You will expect them to perform better because their track is slower than most teams, but clearly in the downforce section it isn't working. It's been 15 laps now and, well, it seems the McLarens have better pace, or at least David Coulthard has better pace than Rubens Barrichello right now, but no matter what he's tried, Coulthard just cannot get through. It's been so far an excellent defensive drive from the Brazilian and if Michael Schumacher wins, or even if he wins, it's gonna the, the credit should go to him, thanks to the defensive working he's putting up right now, and also to the fact that Mick Hackney is nowhere to be seen. Interesting conversation Mendoza and Folk had there that tells us that the brakes on the Jaguar maybe are not that quite good compared to others because others are not doing lift and coast but hey if it works for them they they will keep doing it alright So here in the back of the field we can see John Alesi trying to catch up who I think is Mika Salo and Ricardo Sontan. Oh, looks like those two had an incident and now John Alesi loses his front wing trying to avoid the two. I guess he misjudged the corner trying to make it back onto the track and ended up hitting, hitting, the, the, hitting the front wing on the wall. Here's the replay. What the heck happened here? Oh, Sontan tried to send it too hard on, on, on Salo. And there goes a lazy hitting the wall, yeah, that's a whole bunch of misunderstanding and misjudgment there. Just bad driving overall, it's the back of the field after all. It seems Mendoza and folk were right when they say that the Benetton might be the faster car today because Mendoza, it seems, is on a two-stop. We're not sure if he's trying to push, we know he's lifting and coasting, but he's not been able to pull away from Giancarlo Fisichella in his Benetton, all the way back there is Jarno truly keeping up with them and Mika Hakkinen is definitely very, very frustrated about being unable to overtake this pack right here. And we got our first strategic call into the pits, unlike Alessi who was for damage, we got Jarno truly and Jordan apparently ready to go into the pits. We um. It looks like Jaguar already figured it out, they're trying to stra strategize regarding that, we'll see how it goes to them, but clearly that indicates that Jarno truly is on a two-stop strategy, we'll see how it works out for him, um, apparently Mendoza is also in a two-stop, so let's see how it works out for both of them. I don't think Jarno truly is gonna win out on that strategy because uh, a Jaguar has been called into the pits, we suspect that's Mendoza, we told you he was on a two-stop, but you can clearly see they're discussing their uh, their pit adjustments, it seems that, like the wing is fine, but like I've been telling you before, I don't think Jarno truly is going to be able to jump Mendoza simply because of the fact that he pits way earlier than him and he's not going to be able to have an advantage in terms of pace simply because he's going to be so heavy on fuel, but in any case. Here's Mendoza going to his pit stall. We're gonna see how how much he falls. Let's see where he falls. There's plenty of people coming down. Most of them are likely on a one stop. Mendoza should have a slight bit pace advantage, perhaps, or maybe not because of the 
weight of the fuel solid stop probably about some eight seconds i did not see jarno truly going down there so he's probably ahead yeah there he goes p12 jarno truly nowhere to this to be seen and now let's see how much mendoza can climb now There are plenty reasons to be concerned if you are Ron Dennis of McLaren. The first of them is the fact that Mika Hakkinen is not up here and the second of them is the fact that David Coulthard is pitting way before the Ferrari drivers have pit. They have not been called to the pits and he's going to be the first of the front runners to pit. That's not good. And it seems to me that Giancarlo Fisical is intending to run way longer than plenty of... Oh, oh that's gonna be a big issue. The wall... <laughs> that's a hard stop there. I was gonna say, Fisi is intending to run far longer than plenty and had an amazing pace while doing so, but he's not gonna be able to run down. I hope he's okay. We, in the previous race, we had two big hits with Alessi and it was Marc Genet. Both ended up okay and I hope Fisi is okay but that will be him out of this event. Mika Hakkinen is now coming into the pits, be careful there, do not, do not interrupt Mika Hakkinen. He's coming into the pits. This thing should be enough to put him ahead of Alex Mendoza, who remember was ahead. He would have had to deal with Giancarlo Fisichella had he not had his accident, but he should only be fighting with Mendoza at this point. Speaking of which, where is he right now? There he is. Coming down the back straight, I'm pretty sure Mika Hakkinen should be getting ready to get out of his pit stall. I doubt Mendoza is going to be ahead. Even if he is on a two-stop, that McLaren is rapid. And he was on a lighter field fielder than him. That's Jack Villeneuve. We want to see Mika Hakkinen. Where is he? Yeah, well ahead. Well ahead. The laps on the lighter fuel load were not enough to put him ahead of Alex Mendoza, careful Mika, don't go that wide, you're gonna give up the position again. But that is enough to move Mika Hakkinen up to P4, the question is, is he gonna be able to catch up to the front three and be able to uh, fight for any positions? We will see, but with how far down he is, I very much doubt it. It's been a pretty lonely drive at the top for the Ferrari drivers, only David Coulthard challenging them and the first man in is going to be Michael Schumacher for his one and only stop of the afternoon. Two laps later and now they're calling Rubens Barrichello in and here's an interesting situation. Two laps on clean air. Do you think Rubens did enough to be ahead of? Michael Schumacher with this? Only one way to find out. In goes Rubens. Let's see how how fast can the Ferrari pit crew serve him. Slowly down the pits. Remember, <clears throat> excuse me, the pit limit is 80 kilometers an hour. One of the big questions I have, where in the world is Michael Schumacher? Um, we will not know because I think the, the, the race director is focused on Rubens even though we cannot see much, this, this, this camera angle is not good. Anyway, Rubens Barrichello goes back out again of the, of the, <clears throat> uh, the pit lane and that's back there Michael Schumacher. So the net leader of this race is Rubens Barrichello and now we all know who Ferrari is when it comes to team orders. Do you think they'll swap them back or do you think they'll let them race? Because if they let them race, maybe Michael Schumacher still has a chance of this. Or maybe Rubens Barrichello can win his first race as a Ferrari driver. He failed to win it at Monaco, but could he do it here? It seems somehow that the Benetton team keeps running into trouble. Now it's Alexander Wurz who has reported some steering issues, some suspension issues. And that's put them out of this race. That's uh, Ralph Schumacher and I think Nick Heidfeld have been, well, doing some charity, getting him out of the way. I don't think that was voluntary, though. They just ended up running into him. And, well, at the very least, that's going to get him out of the way for future drivers to not have to contend with him. But still, that will be Benetton out of this race. And, oh man, did they look strong this race. 
it should be just about time for the two stoppers to start thinking about making their final stop of the race. Here we see Alex Mendoza talking with his race engineer right behind him. That will be Jarno truly trying to pass Mendoza somehow, some way, be it strategy or on pace. And that will be Alex Mendoza coming into his stop. I did not hear anything about the Jordan team coming in, so it looks like Jarno truly is going to have his chance at getting the position. He's going to be able to get P5 right here, right now. Right behind them is Eddie Irvine and that, 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 that Jaguar doesn't sound so well. Oh yeah, he's stuck in gear. He's stuck in what appears to be first gear. He exited that corner, that the, the hairpin, and he was on first gear. They're going to have to beat him right after Alex Mendoza is done with his stop. I think, yeah, they are sure Mendoza the caps are enough, and I think I agree with them. The caps should be enough for the Irvine to come through and not interfere with Mendoza's stop. Mendoza goes out. We should be seeing soon enough Eddie Irvine coming in. Okay, Alex Mendoza is only fighting with Jarno Trudeau right now. There he is Eddie Irvine. He is fine, but he will be out of this race, unfortunate. So, Jarno Trulli coming into the pits right now on this lap, one lap later than Alex Mendoza did. I think that will be enough to put him ahead, but I am not completely sure. Only one way to find out. Jarno Trulli into the pits. Assuming, assuming Jordan can give him a solid stop, he should or could be ahead of Mendoza, but I'm pretty sure Mendoza will be close enough to fight him, we will see. I did not see Mendoza going through or anything, I don't see him yet. Truly is off the pits, there goes Heinz Harald Frentzen, and there's Mendoza, a bit too late, but can he make the move into turn one? No, he cannot, and he goes on the grass into turn two, careful now. Nearly runs into Jarno Truly. went wide to avoid him, but that will be Jarno Truly into P... Uh, excuse me, that's P7. Not P6, like I was going to say, P7, but I'm pretty sure Alex Mendoza is going to try to attack him somewhere, and it will be here. A little push there. I'm not sure I, I'm a fan of that move, but it got the it got the job done. He's P7, and on fresher tires than the drivers ahead of him. So if he can get moves done, and yeah, the FIA just gave Mendoza a warning for that. Um, if he can get moves done, he could get as high as P5. He has Heinz Harald Frensen and Jenson Button, who is up for his first points in Formula 1. I see plenty of smoke coming out of the back of a car. I'm pretty sure that's just the stab. Oh yeah, that's just the stabbing right there. He's having an engine failure. That's super. Oh, now it's now it's spewing fire. Jeez. Yeah, that super tech is toast. And with about yeah, it's like 14 laps to go for him because he's a lap down. But with this many laps to go, I I think just the stabbing toast. I think he's not gonna make it. Just the stabbing will be out of this event he's gonna try to keep the, to keep going though so he has the heart at least i doubt he's getting far though clearly there won't be another minority montreal miracle if you don't know that story in the 1999 canadian grand prix so previous year alex mendoza managed to get minardi's first ever podium as well as his first podium driving for minardi which meant that Hiring him to Jaguar made perfect sense. He already worked with those engines. Oh no, Mark, Mark, Mark Genet crashed into the same place. Giancarlo Fisichella did. That's a big hit. And um, yeah, when you see things like this, your fourth wall gets broken quite easily. It, it, Mark Genet's car is inside Giancarlo Fisichella's car. I'm pretty sure both are fine. But anyway, that will be Giancarlo, eh, Giancarlo. Mark Genet out of this race, and now we have to fix the fourth wall. Okay, the fourth wall has been reconstructed. But anyway, like I was saying before, the Minardi Montreal Miracle, it was uh, Mendoza's first podium and Minardi's first podium. 
in Formula One. It was a crazy wet weather race. Mendoza, if I may, if I remember correctly, actually went into the pits on the formation lap to put on intermediates. Perhaps it was or monsoons. I don't know. The weather changed a lot. In any case, I can talk about that later. Mendoza now is putting pressure on Heinz our friends and trying to get the move done into this chicane. He got it. Clean move there as well. I don't think the FIA is going to complain about that one. Mendoza back up into the points. Well, the point. He is now P6. Good job by the careful. Okay, I, I will not talk about that. I, I will not talk anymore. I am indeed aware of the term commentator's curse, but let me just tell you. Rubens Barrichello has put, on, put down an amazing performance so far. In clean air and at times in dirty air because of traffic, he's had better pace than Michael Schumacher. Michael has not had response for his teammate being this fast. It's just, look at the way back there, there's Michael Schumacher. Rubens Barrichello is well en route to win his first race as a Ferrari driver. He won his first race in the 1999 European Grand Prix and now he could win another one. Today it has clearly been Jensen Button's day, not so much Ralph Schumacher's day. He's been caught in a few incidents and now he's gonna be in an accident. Lost both wings. I'm pretty sure that's a brake issue. That's pretty common here in Canada to have brake issues. They're usually not this spectacular, but that will be Ralph Schumacher out of this race. So the only hopes Williams now has of scoring points will be the rookie Jensen Button scoring his first points in this race. Speaking of Jensen Button, the John Britton is being pressured by Alex Mendoza. You saw how he already overtook Heinz uh, Frensen into this chicane. Will he do the same with Button? No, it doesn't seem like it. And I'm pretty sure Jensen Button is annoyed by whoever is ahead of him. I think that's a... it's a prost. Yeah, it's probably Nick Heidfeld. Yeah, it's Nick Heidfeld Mendoza with the move, little squeeze by Button barely gets the move done but he got the move done Alex Mendoza up to P5 and Jensen Button demoted to P6 and oh yeah Mendoza not happy with the move Jensen Button pulled there trying to squeeze him to the inside but I think he's well within his rights to do so okay let's give Mendoza the benefit of the doubt let's see if Button did move like try to squeeze him too much or something let's see into the braking zone we go. Okay, the button did move a bit, tried to squeeze him, but he had that cross in there and he didn't completely block the road. I get Mendoza's angry, but that was a completely legal move, I think. There's, I think, only one scenario that would be better for Ferrari right now, but this one is very, very good for them indeed. It will be a Ferrari 1-2, with Rubens Barrichello winning his second career win, he wins the Canadian Grand Prix. Michael Schumacher still pretty happy. He will finish second right behind his teammate. Great work from Ferrari to secure this position. David Coulthard gets home in what could be a disappointing third. He could not keep up with the Ferrari and even more disappointed will be Mika Hakkinen. Bad start, decent qualifying but could have been better he finishes fourth and all the way back here just look at the pace the Ferrari and McLaren's had that the next car which is Alex Mendoza's Jaguar it's all the way back here still going around the hairpin while the, while those guys are doing the cooldown lap but in any case uh, Alex Mendoza puts it on will put it on fifth position at least if he doesn't make any egregious mistakes and the man you can see here Jensen Button if he doesn't make any mistakes, which it doesn't look like he will, he won't. Jensen Button will finish 6th to get his first ever career point in Formula 1. Great job by the Briton beating his teammate throughout the entirety of the weekend. He gets rewarded with a point.
and it will be Rubens Barrichello winning the 2000 Canadian Grand Prix from Michael Schumacher in the podium also David Coulthard fourth is Mika Hakkinen with Alec Mendoza fifth and Jensen Button sixth right behind them the Jordans of Heinz Arnold Frensen and Jarno Trulli impressive performance from Mika Salo and Nick Heidfeld both of them making up 12 positions they started 21st and 22nd on the grid made it to 9th and 10th excellent job from them Pedro Diniz Pedro De La Rosa 11th and 12th respectively that's everyone down one lap Gaston Mazzacane puts it on 13th with John Alesi 14th remember John Alesi had an issue that forced him to pit remember he broke his front wing he made an extra stop compared to everyone else so his position on the field is expected then yet the DNFs Raul Schumacher, Ricardo Santa, Marc Genet, Jos Verstappen, Eddie Irvine, Jacques Villeneuve, Alexander Wurz and Giancarlo Fisichella they couldn't make it to the end no points for them that race moves Michael Schumacher further into the lead of the World Drivers Championship with a 10 point lead over Mika Hakkinen and even if Mika Hakkinen wins with Michael Schumacher DNFing Michael Schumacher will still lead thanks to the fact he has three second place finishes over Mika Hakkinen's one second place finish David Coulthard at 34 points followed by Rubens Barrichello with just 30 Alex Mendoza is now firmly in fifth place dropping back from the second McLaren and Ferrari drivers behind them is Jacques Villeneuve with seven points Eddie Irwin with five saying Heinz Harald Frenz and Jarno Trulli still on fourth points Giancarlo Fisichella and uh, Ralph Schumacher just two points and Jenson Button ties with Ricardo Sonta with one point but Button's best uh, next best position uh, compared to six is an eighth place finish three of them in fact compared to Sonta's 11th place everyone else is unclassified as for the constructor standings you have Ferrari retaking the lead of the constructor standings with half a season to go from McLaren Mercedes a small lead six points but it's definitely there third place is Jaguar totally entrenched doubt that anyone's gonna take their position behind them is Jordan with nine points VAR Honda just eight points Williams BMW moving ahead of Benetton now with three points and Benetton have just two points everyone else is unclassified that will be it for this particular episode I hope you liked it comment like subscribe the usual youtuber stuff and I'll hope to see you for round 9 of the 2000 FIA Formula 1 World Championship for the French Grand Prix hope to see you there goodbye